If you thought divinity was all about being stuck up and holier than thou, you would be wrong. Today, I ask the question, who is Dionysus? Originally adapted from non-Greek people of the greater Mediterranean, Dionysus was often seen as a foreigner to the Greeks. Yet and still, one of the most celebrated and revered gods of their entire pantheon. There are numerous accounts of the birth of this deity and much controversy surrounding this topic. So much so that in some instances, he is said to have been born multiple times in various manifestations. There were a good many cults created by the worshipers of Dionysus, and as such, many mysteries surrounding the deity. He was the center of various Greek festivals and festivities, especially with his being associated to both wine and dance. He has and goes by many different epithets. An epithet is a descriptive term of accompanying names, sort of like a nickname. From things like he who prevails to others such as flesh eater. Dionysus rules over things such as winemaking, passion, music, and fertility. Images of the deity in the early days generally depict him as a mature male, sometimes bearded, although generally holding a fennel staff tipped with a pine cone. This staff was called a Thyrsius. His most recent depictions show a younger male, naked and androgynous. The literature would even describe him as womanly. Dionysus has with him a procession of wild females, bearded satyrs, and generally erect penises. They all dance, play music, and are equally armed with the same Theerseus that he himself carries. Dionysus is also closely associated with the fruit of the vine, more specifically grapes, and even has some association with trees, at times being referred to as he who runs among the trees. As far as stories go, Dionysus had an old companion named Silenus. As this particular story goes, that old companion one day got very drunk, wandered off, and happened to be found by King Midas. On the occasion that Dionysus was said to have been born from the thigh of Zeus, the infant was taken by the messenger of the gods Hermes and given to a minor forest god by the name of Silenus, the oldest and wisest of the forest creatures. Silenus was known for being a god of strong contradictions. Associated with musical creativity and drunken joy, he was also associated with being a wise prophet and a bearer of terrible wisdom. Silenus was left with the infant and raised the child up to adulthood and eventually became one of his most devout followers. Silenus was known for getting quite drunk and then passing out, only to be stumbled upon by mortals. King Midas was said to have captured the old satyr and then taken the god back to his home there where he was treated like an honored guest. Midas organized a feast that lasted 10 days and 10 nights. On the 11th day, Midas returned the drunken satyr to Dionysus, who had grown worried about the disappearance of his foster father. Dionysus was very pleased to not only have found Silenus, but that King Midas had treated the old satyr so well. As a result, Dionysus offered to Midas a single wish. Without thinking much about it, Midas asked for the ability to turn anything he touched into gold. Dionysus granted the wish, and right away, King Midas went about turning an oak twig and a stone into gold under his touch. Very soon, however, King Midas began to regret the decision that he had made. After the initial fancy of the granted wish had begun to fade, Midas was faced with a dilemma. He could not eat or drink because his refreshments would always turn to gold before he could consume them. 
He desperately sought for a way to get around this problem, and his troubles were brought to a head when his young daughter lovingly ran to embrace her father and was instantly turned to gold. King Midas returned to Dionysus and begged to be saved from the enchantment he had wished upon himself. Dionysus granted King Midas relief from his wish by instructing him to bathe himself in the Pactolus River. Doing so saved King Midas from himself and promptly turned all the sand of the river into gold. In many places, both Dionysus and Apollo both shared a shrine, the god of music and festivities working hand in hand together. They were quite natural partners in celebrating the joys of social life. Dionysus being more on the side of debauchery. In fact, during an annual festival held in Greece, in honor of Dionysus, it was said the whole city indulged and became very drunk. People would even come from far and wide outside of Greece. <laughs>